welcome to this EGR vodcast uh, here at ICE 2022. And I'm joined here by Joe Kokoza, founder of Fanslide. So Joe, thanks so much for joining me. Great to be here. Thanks, okay. Nick. Yeah. Um, well, so Fanslide launched last year. Um, obviously, uh, it's been a busy year for you, as you can tell. Um, can you tell us a bit about where the idea came from and about the app itself? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I worked in the betting industry uh, for a number of years. I was a trader at Labbrooks. I founded Fitstairs back in 2005. Um, I've always been a massive football fan, big sports fan. I've always liked gambling recreationally myself, betting on football, tennis, other sports. Um, and I guess I've always felt that there's uh, like a something, a, a space in between betting and fantasy kind of games. Um, that needed filling, uh, and particularly around, around, around live sport. So really it was four or five years ago, sitting watching Burnley Southampton or something on a Monday night, thinking, what, what's missing from this experience? What can I, what, what, what can I, what can I put in this space? Um, so yeah, that was, that, was where, that was where the whole ball started rolling, really. Okay, and so where do you see the gap in the market for a fan side? I think it, it really sits at the intersection of of, of betting, in-play betting, and fantasy, fantasy sports. Um, you know, fantasy, fantasy football, FPL has you know eight, nine million people playing that game. They, they, they make their decisions an hour and a half before the kickoff of the first match. They're very engaged, following to see what happens over the course of the weekend. But there's there's no more decisions to make. There's no more interaction. On the other hand, you have in-play betting, which you know obviously has grown astronomically in the last 15, 20 years in the UK. We'll no doubt do the same in the US now. They have uh, now online betting is, is being legalized state by state. Um, and really that's, that growth has been, been uh, uh, kind of triggered by the, the proliferation of markets. And there's lots and lots of betting opportunities. In-play betting has really been, part of the growth of in-play betting has been around the proliferation of markets. So just lots of prices, lots of different markets for people to bet on. Uh, and I, I feel like there's something that there's there's a gap, there's an opportunity there around the live game that isn't about betting on how many corners there'll be in the next in the first half or uh, who's going to get the next throw in or whatever it is. Uh, that actually takes the same kind of decisions and thought that goes into people's fantasy selections and bakes those into a game yeah. where that game is actually designed to kind of replicate some of the dynamics of of, of, of actually betting. Okay. Um, so that's really that's the gap that we've that we've seen at Fansite. Yeah. And so you know, as you mentioned, obviously sports betting is huge, um, not only here in the UK and Europe, but also now uh, massively in the states as well. How do you see yourself differentiating against competitors? <coughs> I think the the key for us is we. I always say that all, all bookmakers, all betting companies, sell the same product. Yeah. So you're selling bets. Um, bets are when you place a bet, it's a transaction. You you put your money down. You are engaged in the outcome, um, but the actual transaction itself isn't, isn't fun or rewarding. It's not something you, you particularly enjoy. The, I think cash out has been an amazing innovation in, in prolonging the customer's engagement with that decision that they've made, because they have another decision to make. Do I want to cash that bet out? And that brings in a whole new, uh, a whole new realm of, uh, a, a consideration of whether or not they want to interact with the bet again. So aside from cash out, you know, betting is, is transactional. Yeah. And what we, where we really differentiate is we, we don't sell bets. What we do, our games create entertainment experiences. Mm -hmm. So the whole, the whole point of Fanslide is to, to have a game that is entertaining in and of itself. So when you, when you play Fanslide, you have open-ended decisions to make through the duration of, of a match. Obviously, we've, we've started with football, but we'll be building games for other sports. So you have open-ended decisions. Each of them really psychologically is like a little mini bet that you're placing. You know, you're deciding which players you want to have active at which time, what points multiples they're going to get. So each of those has that same trigger and that same excitement uh, um, uh, and the same opportunity cost that a bet has. You know, if you want to have Ronaldo times three, you can't have Harry Kane times three. If you're using Ronaldo now, you can't use him later. So these are all like little mini bets. But rather than rather than a bet, which is, as I say, purely transactional, the, these, this experience 
it's fun and entertaining, it's sociable, your mates are on there, you're chatting to friends, you're going up and down the, the standing as, as, the, as the game develops. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's fun in and of itself. And really that's the key differentiator for us. Yeah. It's, an, it's an experience, it's entertainment, not, not just a transaction, I'm gonna win or lose. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you know, your focus at the moment is on football. Um, yeah. And obviously there is a huge focus there between football and betting at the moment. How has that impacted Fanfloyd? Yeah, I think the, the whole, um, I think it's, it, uh, the whole conversation around the relationship between football and betting is, is long overdue really. I think for me personally as a, as a football fan, the having betting adverts on TV has never really sat well with me. And I think that's been a huge contributor to this kind of blurring of the two industries really. Um, so I think it's good that that's coming under scrutiny and then that that's going to be reviewed and dealt with um, over time. For us, you know, really that's part of the story as well for us in that it's, it's about creating, you know, lots of football fans like to bet. They bet because it makes what they're watching more exciting. Uh, certainly that's one of the reasons why, why I bet on football. I want that added level of involvement and emotional investment in, in a match. Um, they bet because they have opinions, so they've spent a week think about who to put in a fantasy team or arguing with their mates about who's going who's gonna to score at the weekend, whatever it may be. So I, I think it's important that we don't just sort of throw that out the window and that betting becomes this kind of pariah uh, when we talk about football because it's something that lots of fans enjoy. Uh, and I think fan side is a, is a great opportunity for them to enjoy those same, uh, those same kind of dynamics and that same excitement, but without it feeling like you're, you're, you get drawn into kind of cycles of placing lots of bets. The whole object of fan slides, you know, we're, 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 we'll be monetizing through a pool betting license. So it's people playing the game, being entertained for the duration of the match and being able to say at the start of the game, I want to uh, pay a three pound entry into, uh, into an unlimited table where everyone's stakes are in the pot shared out or I want to play in an 11 a side game and there's 11 people staking 10 pounds, the winner gets 50 quid, second gets 20 quid and so on. And where, so where your stake, you're deciding your stake at the start of a match and you're getting 90 minutes of entertainment. You, you, you may not win, you may not have any of that money returned to you, but you've been entertained for 90 minutes. And I think that's where, that's where traditional betting, where actually if you, if you place a bet and you don't win, you won't have that same sense of having been entertained or having some kind of value for money out of that experience. So in that sense, I think we have a, a much more sustainable uh, model. And that's of course be backed up with all the, uh, all the latest responsible gambling tools, stake limits, play limits, uh, as well as uh, deposit limits and timeouts and so on. And so you, you mentioned there um, that, you know, about the pool betting um, functionality as well, and you've been testing FanSlide ahead of that. How's that been going? Yeah, so we've been testing, the app first launched actually back in September 2020, so this was a very early kind of MVP. We spent a lot of time, much longer than we thought we, we would need to, actually testing the, the technology itself. You know, we take a, a live data feed from Stats Perform, an Opta feed. Uh, that data is very detailed, it's mutable, so it changes things, updates uh, come in for events, times get changed and so on. Our game is based around time, so players, customers are sliding players in and out at different times, so there's a, there's a huge world of technical kind of complexity that we've, uh, we've learned. Um, but in terms of the actual game and the, the testing with, with uh, live players, what we've learned is that people love it, that it, uh, it does create this really fun, rewarding, sociable, exciting experience. Uh, the anecdotal feedback, the feedback in our, in our community on Twitter, on, we have a Slack community, our, our reviews in the app stores, you know, people, people love playing it. Um, and the data shows that, you know, we've got a 25% 90 day retention rate amongst players. Our time on app is, is colossal. Uh, the average time on app per, per user per match is just under 29 minutes per, per game. 79% uh, of users are still playing, are still on the app in the last 15 minutes for a match. So uh, amazing anecdotal feedback and also this like huge data that says that we've created a model for engagement in, around live sport that 
that people love and you know the numbers the numbers back it up so it's yeah it's really exciting yeah and it just just following up on that as well about the you know initial data that you're receiving from players like how are you kind of planning on building on that in the future yeah so the the, the future for us is really about um, releasing the pool betting version in the UK, which we're looking to do this summer around the Women's Euros, and then and then fully launch um, at the start of the season. And obviously, we're uh, getting very excited about the World Cup. Um, but actually, you know, the platform and from a more commercial point of view, Fanside is about is obviously an opportunity to understand uh, what our players, what our users and customers are, are doing during a match. So players are sliding footballers in and out of the game you know we can infer from that what which players they think are going to do well who they think is going to score next if they think there'll be a goal if they've brought defenders in what what have you so so that data is very powerful we can in the future look to offer in-play betting under a full uh, remote betting license to people based on uh, if they if they if they want it based on their decisions in the game um, but also we're, we're gathering lots of informa information around uh, around what people are feeling during the game. So we look to commercialise this beyond betting and other markets um, and certainly as a, as a fan engagement platform for be that for broadcasters or rights holders where you know, it could be used to advertise products um, based on the customer's mood at that moment in the match. You know, in a cricket match, there's been a wicket, you've, you've, got the, uh, you've just banked the batsman's runs at the end of the last over and you've got the, the bowler trebled you know, you're, you're quids in in the game, you're very happy, that's obviously an opportunity for, for, to, for you to be served perhaps a piece of content that you might enjoy or because we know that that's, that's your mood. So there's a, there's a big data-based opportunity that goes way beyond at actually where we're starting, which is pull better. Yeah, yeah, quite yeah, um, So just uh, last question and not to give too much away, obviously, but what's your focus for the next 12 months? Um, yeah, I guess I touched on it there a little bit, but it's it's getting the pool betting version released in, in the UK to begin with. So so we have a, a gambling commission license uh, for pool betting. Um, once that's operating, we're comfortable with how that's going. Um, we'll look to vary that license and, and add in some in-play betting opportunities for those that want it. Uh, but we're also looking globally as well, because we think there's an opportunity to license these games to betting companies in other territories. Um, and use them as a, as, a, as, a, as a huge differentiator in customer acquisition uh, and for retention because as I say the game is whole, all about entertainment for the customer uh, and it's something that ultimately you know, no one else has really created uh, and certainly no one else is, is, is looking at this opportunity in the way that, that we are. Okay, well, exciting times ahead. Yeah, let's uh, hope so. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll hear a lot more from uh, you guys over the next I hope yeah, so. Looking forward months. to having a, having a stand here at some point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, thanks so cool. much for joining me, Joe. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Thank Cheers, you. Nate. Thank you. Thanks.